Good afternoon, my friends. This is Paul, and this is my lovely girlfriend, Autumn. Hey, guys. Making her first appearance actually on screen. Now, you appeared yeah. in the very first video we ever did was the ENFP, ENFP, ISTJ interview blooper take. Yeah. Yeah, that was in the background. And the, right, that, Trying to hold a camera, but it wasn't working. And trying to hold in your laughter, because we were being well, yeah, so that's ridiculous. What it, that's, what it wasn't, that's why it wasn't working. I wasn't, it wasn't really, like, everyone. I was just kind of laughing at Dan. <laughs> Who doesn't laugh at Dan? <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> um, Dan's a super cool guy. Just oh, yeah, yeah, totally, totally. He's a great guy. So, right. anyway, so we had a request from, I actually forgot who, but someone requested that we do a video of being a romantic couple. I'm an ISTJ, in case you haven't seen my videos. She's an INFJ, which, yep. in case you forgot, I made a video before called Enigmatic Yet Awesome INFJs, yep. and the caption of that video is me pulling out my hair. So, how did I ever have to end up in a relationship with one? Yeah. Coercion? <laughs> did you have to, like, point I a gun? I did not manipulate Did you. you have to point a gun to my head and say, you better go out with me or else? Maybe, like, a mental gun, not like a... Oh, you mean like, a Jedi, know, like a Jedi mind trick where you're like, yeah, you yeah. are going to go out with me. I am going to go out with you. You are going to ask me to go out with you. I am going to ask her to go out with me. Well, seeing as how I'm not really up on Star Wars, maybe you're just, like, under the Infurious curse. Or that, yeah. So, uh, obviously, this is going to go on my Myers-Briggs sub-channel, so we're going to yeah. start by talking about the functions, in which we are total <laughs> opposites. Yeah. So I just have... <laughs> yeah, just a little itty just bit. Just a little bit. I have dominant introverted sensing, then extroverted thinking, introverted feeling, extroverted intuition. She, on the other hand, has introverted intuition... Extroverted feeling, introverted thinking, extroverted sensing. Boy, do I make fun of her for that all the time. I say, you silly, inferior, extroverted sensor, you. Yeah. Yet I still love you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, um, with regards to having a boyfriend that has dominant introverted sensing, would you say that that creates challenges or pros to our relationship? And make sure to look at the camera when you say it, because we don't want the audience mm. to think, like, hey, I am Autumn Half-Face, well, you know? I mean, I don't care if they see half my face. Like, I'm not, like, showing them my face to, like, show them my face. I'm, like, thinking. So if they can't see my face, it's because I'm thinking, not trying to show them my face. So it's not like I'm failing at that, because it's not my goal. Um, I say that it adds pros to our relationship, but how I clash with it is maybe more of a con, you know? So I definitely think it's, like, a good trait to have. It's just... I, I need to get used to it. <laughs> well, you conveniently forgot to name an example. Um, I didn't forget. So I guess forgot, because I can't really think of one right now. Well, introverted sensing is a function that deals with, like, memories and facts and data and stuff like that. You are good at remembering a lot of things, but then there are some things that you're not good at remembering. Well, it's not like we have perfect memories. Well, yeah, obviously. If I had but, a I mean, perfect memory, then I'd be able to recount the very first words I ever said, which, actually, now that I think about it, I believe the first sentence I ever said was, Mommy, let's go into the kitchen, when I was five. I don't think that was your first word. That just might That's be, the like, first the first one I remembered. Right. That's, there's a difference. <clears throat> So okay, I, wait, hold on. I want to continue. Um, I think that it helps in conversation because you're better at remembering where we left off than I am, and it helps because I'm really good at like forgetting everything, <laughs> like even the important stuff. And you're not good at forgetting important <laughs> stuff, or at least like not really, you know. And if you forget one important thing. It, it's like you make sure to try to remember it next time. It's like you the know? second coming. It's like, what? Paul forgot something? For real? Okay, it's not that drastic, but kind of. Okay, what I think is one of the benefits to leading with introverted intuition, which, in case you guys don't know, which you should if you're watching the Myers-Briggs <laughs> channel, is a function that deals with realistic possibilities within, like, a grand scale of things. Um, 
I really like how you seem to be able to like find these random connections in like my body expressions and my voice tones that you somehow manage to divine a meaning out of that. And sometimes that'll like help us progress in a conversation or a stopping point in a way that I wouldn't be able to figure out. Like you might notice that I'm getting kind of quiet and you'd be like, what's wrong? And I'll be like, oh, right. Uh, something's wrong. Okay. Well, you're kind of right about that. Well, would you have to agree or disagree with that statement? Like yay, nay, or hey? Um, I'd agree. I think that, okay, in defense of INFJs, I don't think that most, like, I don't think that 90% of the connections we make are actually things that we make. I think that they're just there and we notice them. Like um, what? I have no idea. Like, there are so many. What about when we watched that YouTube video earlier and you just said, oh, were you wearing the same shirt as before? Well, that was, that was like a random connection that's like the most trivial of connections I could think of. <laughs> because, it, like, they were both blue. Hey, at least you noticed my favorite color. Well, yeah, of course. But, I don't know, I think it's just, I guess it's something that I take for granted because I'm just... I've always kind of been able to read people, and so that means, like, I pick up on cues, you know, and, like, voice, and, like, you know, like, tone fluctuations and stuff. Very, very and nice. And different, like, inflections and stuff. Now, my secondary function is extroverted thinking, which, evidenced by the fact that I'm making this video, right. is basically the function <laughs> that governs using what what I've thought of and presenting it in an external format. So would you say that, th that you've seen that at play in our relationship at all? Yes. You, even when you're not trying to think, or even when you're not trying to figure something out, you still talk it out, you know? Like, um, I'll say, like, so let me get this straight. So what you're essentially saying is... No, well, I mean, like, there's that, but then there's also that you, um, there's also just, like, things that are obvious, you need to say them. Not because you're trying to think them out, not because they're not obvious to you, but because, like, it just, it, it helps you, like, process it and, I guess, like, affirm that, yes, this is how it is and stuff. And, but, like, the thing about it is that you come to that affirmation by yourself, just through talking it. Not always, but a lot of times. I would say so. <clears throat> One of the benefits that I see of you being a secondary extroverted feeler is I see a lot of potential in how you seem to do a really good job of, like, naturally picking up on fluctuations in my emotional states. And sometimes even mm -hmm. noticing that they're there in the first place, because, like... Sometimes I'm not even aware that I'm experiencing a surge of emotion. You'll just, like... I don't see... You'll it, just say, like, what are, uh, what are you feeling right now? And I'll be like, oh, I was feeling something. That's such, like, a foreign concept to me. Because it's like I'm always feeling something. Except when I'm not. But even when I'm not, I'm still feeling something. I mean, know? you obviously so have like... to feel something for yourself, but... Well, yeah, but it, it's just... It's weird. Well, I guess in your case, <laughs> it might be the need to process your emotions out loud as much as I process my thoughts out loud. No, I don't really need to process my emotions out loud. Well, maybe I'm thinking of another function then. I mean, I it helps if I write them down. Like, my big thing about how I process things and figure things out well, is that leads writing into it down. The, well, that leads into the second, uh, the third function, which is you would have tertiary introverted thinking which is the need to internally process logical thoughts and mm -hmm. concepts, which has actually led to some of the best moments in our relationship is when you spend so much time pondering over an issue, and then all of a sudden you have this, like, Eureka, I got it! Not in those words. Well, yeah. Um, I don't know, I've always been the type of person to keep it inward, because I feel like when I start talking about whatever's inside it's so hard to lose track like I might be really good at coming up with connections on the outside but when it comes to like verbalizing I don't even know if that's a word but like when it comes to verbalizing connections on the inside 
I can't find them. You know, like, n like everything's connected or nothing's connected, and I, it does not work. So, yeah. So your hair is connected to your head, and uh, well, see, your face but, is connected to your I, neck. Like, that I kind of connections? Kind of, but, well, it's also like this feeling is connected to this feeling, and that's connected to this sub-thought, which is connected to this thing over here. And stuff like that. It's more so like, it's like... It's, it's more like when I'm... If I'm talking instead of allowing myself to process it in my head or on paper, it's like I can't process abstract thought. You know? I, I don't know why. It's just... Hmm. That's part of the reason why... I'm sure we were going to get into this, but that's part of the reason why it's harder for me to talk over video chat instead of typing, you know, because, like, I, I don't have certain things to help me. Like, I don't have the punctuation. I don't have the order of being precise when I'm saying whatever I'm saying because it's just, it's, it's like a mess. I would have to say something like 17 times before I was, I'd be, like, able to fully get my point across in the way that I meant it and know that I'm getting it across. And make sure like, that I'm not just more confused. <laughs> right, right. Like, it just, it doesn't work. Now, um, I know we complain about this all the time, so to try to what? to try not to bring that up again, um, tertiary introverted feeling. What a pain in the, I, everywhere. I mean, I feel like you kind of complain about it <clears throat> for us. I do complain. Like, enough for the both of us, so I don't really have to complain about it. Um, do you see any benefits to tertiary introverted feeling? I, I mean, it's it's there even if it's tertiary. even if it's not much you know, so i mean it's um is it bad if i can't <laughs> maybe it would be better if i explain this part okay, so tertiary well, yeah. introverted feeling i made an entire video on this it's called isdj and tertiary introverted feeling it was one of the earliest videos i did that was outside of like strictly catholic stuff and the way i described it is Tertiary introverted feeling is basically like a cushion to prevent us from just going all out on our extroverted thinking. It sort of governs our morals and like our secret guide to how we view life. So like... Secret guide. Yeah, secret <laughs> is the, the word for it. Because like, I might have boundaries and guidelines that the introverted feeling is going to be telling me, okay, so you better not be going past that line. But on in a more negative context, it can also be like, I've got all these thoughts and emotions in my head, but they can't necessarily come out if I try to verbalize them. So I might either need to write them down or you'll need to draw them out of me. Mm -hmm. Seems like I just expressed what, what you did with logic, <laughs> right. what I do with, no wonder why I learned right. the Enigma types. <laughs> so then we get into the bottom function. Or shall we call it the bottom of the barrel function? What's my bottom function? Extroverted sensing. Oh, right. I say that all the time. Yeah, too. no, I forgot. Okay. Okay. I, I, yeah, that's definitely my bottom function. I'm really bad at that. Like, uh, should I name examples for the audience? Or If you want, I'm sure I could add some to the like list. Like when you drove right past the stop sign and I said, how did you not notice that stop sign? I just, I don't know. I just, it just wasn't there but then it was but maybe it was, it was, was but it like my big head got in the way was i like hello autumn and then like the stop sign was conveniently like right here yes that's exactly what happened. um i i like i will i'll just i'll be so focused on paying attention to like where i'm going or like where i'm walking mm -hmm. like right in front of me and that'll just, like, become a part of me, but, like, the rest of the world is so entirely separate. It's like, I am not me when I'm walking, or, like, when I'm, like, sitting thinking about something. Like, it, it, it's like, there's a little me inside of my head that's, like, doing all the work, and it just, like, kind of forgets that, like, I'm an entire person instead of just living in my brain. Like, so you actually have a me, world. Yeah. So, like, this but is a hand, right? Right, but, like, if, if I was thinking, I, it, like, if if I was thinking, not even if I was zoned out, I you could hold your hand there for, like, an hour. And, like... An hour, seriously? I don't know, but, like, I... My point is, I wouldn't recognize it from the fact that you're holding your hand up. I would be like, 
oh, he's doing something with his body. I wonder how that's affecting him. And then it would occur to me that, wait, why is there a hand right there? You Whoops, know? we just made the camera go black. Like, it's, it's weird not fully being aware of, like, your physical surroundings. And then it's kind of fun because when you go to take it in, it's like... It's like a brand new world, because it kind of is, you know? Well, I would say for me, I have inferior extroverted intuition, which my best friend Andy, um, the engineer for God, he's done a few dual video game reviews with me. He can tell you that that's the function that, if it's at the bottom of the function stack, it basically means we hate new ideas like the plague. We, we don't really like deviating from routine. We don't really like change. Whenever something new comes out, we think, oh, it's doomed to failure. Right. And we typically have a very pessimistic attitude towards the future. Like, every time we talk about the future, <laughs> I usually complain about it, or I'm like, I'm worried about it. Well, I mean, it's, <clears throat> like, I guess it's, it can be useful because you're preparing yourself, obviously. It can be overly negative, but I consider, I guess, just in defense of my fears and having anxiety and just, like, worries and stuff like that, I guess in defense of myself not fully getting rid of some of them, it's definitely useful, you know? So it's, yeah, it's a bad thing to be pessimistic and everything, or I guess it can be, and it can definitely be misused, and it can hurt a lot of hopes. But at the same time, like, maybe that's okay. But also keep in mind that, and I'm saying this as much to the audience as you, that Myers-Briggs is really not supposed to be the end-all. Like, it's not. you have to be like this or else. Even if it was supposed to be, it's not. So yeah, because like, oh well. we have fluctuations in mm -hmm. the letters, and we also have fluctuations yep. in the percentages of... Like oh, thinking yeah. and feeling and whatnot. Yeah. So yeah. I'm I'm not always going to act introverted all the time. You're not always going to act like a feeler all the time. Heck, there are going to be days when you're going to want to slap me in the chin for a stupid comment I make. You know, I stuff think like that. that like I think that there are times in my life where I've kind of gotten out of feeling mode and kind of gone into thinking mode. They've lasted like two weeks at a time. And I have never been, like, more sciencey and focused than I have been in those times. Mm. Because it's, like, I wasn't, like, I, was, I wasn't thinking about emotions and stuff like that. And not that, like, thinking types don't think about emotions, but, like, I was led by, like, this drive of, like, my thoughts and, like, the physical world and my thoughts about the physical world instead of, like, I don't know instead of just me, you know? It, but it it comes, like, once every, like, three months or so. It'll last, like, a week, hmm. you know? So, would you say that there are benefits to having two letters in common? Yes. <laughs> there are benefits in having as many letters as possible in common. <laughs> so, I mean, what, what do you admire about mutual introversion? It's just so great to be <laughs> with someone who understands how people can be like people and like kind of scary like the song oh, like, god is good beer is awful and people are crazy i know i butchered that title but that's basically how you I and i think I about the world what that song is it's really yeah, called god is good beer is great and people are crazy a beer's horrible <laughs> yeah i totally get sick of it. i agree it disgusting. yeah if i were to have a beer i'd probably be super like giddy no, you wouldn't, because it would taste horrible. You wouldn't want to drink it. True. I'd probably gag. And then I'd get it all over your face. No, you wouldn't. Anyway. That's unrealistic. I would say that I really like mutual introversion because it basically means that each of us are going to be naturally aware of each other's limitations mm -hmm. as far as socialization oh, yeah, goes. Sure. And, like, I'm not going to drag her along to a party if she's not up to it. Yeah. And she's not going to drag me along to... A bookstore with lots of people. Yeah, yeah, a bookstore <laughs> with lots of people. Pretty because that's what the you're social equivalent. environment I would be in. Well, yeah. you know I hate parties. But every now and then I get in a partying mood. Um, also, the mutual J. I think, mm -hmm. I think I, I've lightened up considerably since we first met, wouldn't you say? Like. Well, okay, since we first met, yes, yeah, since we've gotten together, I don't think either of us have 
does really like eased up in like our functions and if we have it's been like momentary well, yeah. well j is not really a function in and of itself well, yeah, it's, but it's I a mean, guide like, point to how we present ourselves to the world okay well as of that i don't think like we've changed all that majorly if at all um i like having the j in common because it's it's helpful that we both need a little bit of structure you know, it's, Indeed, it's helpful yeah. to, it's extremely helpful to be with someone who plans everything out. It's so helpful because it's like, I do that too, you know? Um, and it's just not the best when people don't understand the need for planning, which I mean, I can't hold it against them. If you don't understand something, you don't understand it, but it doesn't really jive with like me or any part of me. Um, and then just in like as like relationship -y stuff it's nice to have that assurance because it's like despite like okay pushing your feelings aside because you are more structured you are more likely to text me back or to contact me or to have your usual methods of showing that you care you know whereas some people if their feelings waver a little bit and they're not necessarily like putting like 110% into having that structure in the relationship and they are perceiving types, then they're not going to show you the affection. It's, it's not going to be reassuring, you know, but I think that's something that's definitely helped. I, mean, I don't have an ending statement. Yeah. The the whole punctuality thing. Like I I'm made a too. I made a whole Facebook status just saying that you were uber punctual. I mean I try. I'm not always. You're way more punctual than most <laughs> of my friends. Cool so, to sort of conclude, because I don't really like my videos going over 25 minutes. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, have you ever noticed instances in our relationship when I've acted the opposite of what my letters are? Like, have you noticed when I've acted extroverted? introvert uh intuitive feeling or perceiving um when you like become afraid and start blaming yourself for everything you get very feeling oriented you it's like you might i think that crisis you, like, mode as i've said on my yeah, standalone videos like you might think that you're just that you have just like a whole bunch of like logical fears and that you're right, you're not. but you're not. <laughs> yeah. I would say that I definitely come across as extroverted when I'm on this channel with people because we're not just on here to chit chat. We're here to exchange ideas. And that's a way of like getting my extroverted thinking right. out of the way. Right. It's expressing our thoughts on our relationship. Because, you know, so many people are like, ISTJ, INFJ relationships, you know, those things are, like, terrible, right? And it's like, well, tell that to us, you know? <laughs> right. Um, I would say for you, like, I see you constantly finding logical flaws in the video games I show you. And then, like, sometimes if I get in one of my yeah. rare silly modes, you'll say, now, Paul, that's not practical. And INFJs are not typically known for being very practical, so... I feel like I try to be practical often. And you've really developed your inferior sensing. Well, in that respect. Maybe not Have in I? terms of directions. <laughs> well, yeah, not... But, but something yeah. along those lines. So, um, to really wrap this up, because we're really approaching oh, yeah, the mark. Sure. Yep. This is a Catholic channel, so obviously um, we want this relationship to be oriented in the Catholic Church. So, would you say that our dynamics help to foster a relationship centered on God or do they hinder a relationship with God in any way? I think that, okay, I think that if we let them, like if we let our differences hinder our relationship with God, then it does. <laughs> but if we don't let it, then it helps. You know, it, it's, it's more about noticing what is different and what could potentially be wrong and just trusting in God. Yeah, I would say the 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 dominant function really helps in keeping our focus on God because mm -hmm. yep. like always like with the sensing that you know that's in charge of facts and rules and all that. I can say now autumn, we're not allowed to do this because the right. Catholic Church disapproves. Right. And then if I'm 
about to toe the line, you'll use your intuition to say, now, Paul, let's think overall of, well, I guess you take a more positive approach, or you might say, like, overall, Paul, let's look at the general dynamics of this problem and yeah, figure out how overall God would feel about it. And I know I'm not usually this vague, but I'm trying not to give away, like, our, our secrets in our relationship, we which not, I, th I hope you'll appreciate. We went over 25 minutes. I know we did, but... It's a general guideline. Okay. I just defeated my type there. But that's okay. Good job. <laughs> All right, so do you have a closing, like, hmm? statement to give the audience to, like, be super <laughs> catchy? No. <laughs> you remind me of Andy. Let me pull an Andy and just say, no. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for being a guest on my channel. Always welcome. It was a pleasure. Hope we can do another video right after this. Start Maybe. panicking. And as I always say to you guys, keep the faith, stay epic, and God bless. Bye. Now you're going to criticize me for ha not having a smile when I click the stop button. So you click the stop button, and I'll smile. <sighs> Bye. <laughs>